Hey everyone, so it is time for another episode of Tip of the Week, and this week I want to go into a bit of a different topic, which is setting ease manually. And um, this is just a totally different way of animating that some people like to prefer over the way that I showed you a couple weeks ago when we did the set ease um, tutorial. But um, so what some people like to do is as they're animating, you know, if you turn on your onion skin, I'll set a keyframe on the first frame with F6 just to make sure that everything is held in place. And then if you go directly to the next frame over and hit F6 again, you can, um, you know, hold, hold everything in place there with a keyframe and then you can go back and adjust certain things. And the advantage of doing it directly on the keyframe next to it is that you can get the the onion skin to show just the pre that first drawing and the next drawing. So, in other words, it's like how you would animate on paper where you do the key drawings first and then you go back and do your breakdown drawings. So here you can set, um, you know, you can set your your first key and your end key there. And um, so then you might want to just drag these apart and then you can set a keyframe in the in the middle there, another F6 there to create the keyframe in the, in the middle. And then I'll just take a look at what's going on with the whole arm there. And for my keyframe in the middle, I might want to, you know, lead the action a little bit with the elbow. So I'll lead the action up there with the elbow and I'll move the whole arm up a little bit, maybe even a bit more than that. So Okay, so I've got my keyframe there, and then I've got it leading the action, and then going up. But now, if I really want this to, and actually I might even um, have an additional frame in there where there's a bit of anticipation where it moves down before it comes up. But in any case, um, the real thing here about doing things manually is how do you get from this keyframe to this keyframe? So you can pull these guys apart by one, well, are we, or you can pull them all the way apart and you can do your set ease on multiple parameters. But if you want to do it manually, you just pull it over by one, take that keyframe and um, set it to interpolate so that you have the, uh, oops, I can't remember which one's which. Okay, so we set motion keyframe on that one. And so that we have the movement in between. And then after setting the, um, setting that to be a motion keyframe, then we'll go back on that frame in the center and we'll add that keyframe in there manually. So then we can take the two keyframes to the right, pull them over by one, whoops, a bit tricky but useful. Make sure we have that set to a motion keyframe again so it's interpolating in between the two. And then we'll set a keyframe on there. And then we'll probably even do it one more time. We'll bring those over by one we'll interpolate between the two and then we'll add the keyframe. So what this does is every time you move it over by one and add a keyframe it halves the movement and you're putting a keyframe halfway between. So it's slowing and then it's going quickly at the end there into that one. So in other words like I had my first keyframe that I set at the beginning and then I set this kind of a, a, a leading elbow pose there and then between the leading elbow and the final pose up at the top, I interpolated and then I moved it over a little bit each time. So then, at this point, if you actually were to, let's say, play through this animation, like if I set this stop frame to be there and I actually hit play and play through it, it works pretty well, but it's probably a little bit fast. So if you want to slow it down at this point, you can just drag these keyframes over and actually set these guys on twos. So in other words, what you're doing when you're doing this is you're actually following a traditional process like what you would do on paper, except you're doing it with keyframes instead. It's a little bit of a tricky concept, so hopefully you guys can understand what I am doing here. And you might sometimes decide, um, you know, you want to put it on ones and if, it's, if you want the movement to be faster, but here you've got it a little bit slow, so maybe you want to have some of them on twos in the in the middle, and then you want to have it on ones at the end. So you could take those ones on the end and move them so that they're on ones. And then let's hit the stop frame there and then go back and check it. So there we go. Now I've got that movement working how I want it to work. So let's do another example because 
this is a complicated concept. So let's say now I've got this arm down here and I want this arm to straighten out. So um, I usually like to do everything. I, I like to keyframe the entire character just to make sure, but you can do just the arm if you want to do just the arm. So then let's set that second keyframe right next to the first one. And now what I'll do is I'll go in here and I will just straighten out on the second keyframe. I'm going to straight I'm going to make the change I want to make, so I'll straighten the arm out like so. And and as I'm doing that, by the way, I'm hitting B to go up to the parent element so that I don't have to go inside all the time. So there's the first movement and the second movement. Maybe on the second one I also want the arm to come up a little bit, move out a little bit so that there's just a bit of extra action happening there. So there's my first one and there's my second one. Maybe the first one, maybe the shoulder is kind of in an awkward position there, so I might just adjust where that is. Okay, so those are my two positions. And if I want to go um, easing into that movement, then the way that I'll do it is I will take the second keyframe, I'll move it over a frame, I'll go to the first keyframe, set a motion keyframe, and then I go in between the two and I add a keyframe. So at this point what I've done is I did a linear interpolation between frame 1 and frame 3 here and then I set a key from the center. So all I've done is I've got the first frame, I've got one frame halfway in between them and then I've got my second frame. So at this point I can decide which part I want to slow down. And whichever part you want to slow down is the part where you want to go and move the keyframes in. So if I want to slow out of this position, like I want it to stay closer to this position for longer, then I'm going to move both the center keyframe and the right keyframe over. If I want it to go fast out of this position and then slow into the second position, I will only move the last keyframe over. Um, let's think of it this way. Maybe I can draw a drawing of it on, on top here. Let's just add a drawing layer. So let's say this is frame one, and here I've got three and I broke it down with two in the center there. So, so far these are all even, right? If you look at it like you're looking at it with your, um, when you're actually drawing this on paper. So if I want it to slow from one to two, I'm going to move both two and three over. I'll, I'll um, set a keyframe and then I'll move the, those, all of those ones over and set a keyframe. And then I'll move all of these ones over and set a keyframe. And that's gonna slow out of that one. If instead I want to have it slow on this side, I'm going to move two and three apart by one and set a keyframe. Oops, what happened? I suddenly lost the ability to draw. Oh, no, I just uh, slowed down for a second, probably Camtasia. Yay, Camtasia. Okay, so I would move um, three over, set a keyframe, and then I could move three over again, set a keyframe, and then move three over again and set a keyframe. And that's what it does. So. We're, we're actually doing this process manually here. And so you might ask, well, is there a reason why doing it manually is better? And um, I don't think there's a, a good or a bad way of doing things. I think that um, people who come from a traditional background like the organic feeling of doing it manually. And people who come from more of a um, you know a digital background are just like, well, I'll just I'll just use the I'll just use the set ease. But at the end of the day, when you do it manually, it just looks a little bit more organic. And that's that's the difference. So in this case, now I have a slow from that one and a quick in the end. Now if I did want to add a slow in the end like I did here on this drawing, then I could take three, move it over, um, make sure there's interpolation in between the two, and then set a keyframe. And then I can move that one over by one, go in the center, Oops, it looks like I just created a bunch of keyframes that are all the same. So let's go undo that for a second. Okay, so here, oh yeah, I've got two in, the, in a row that are the same. So let's just get rid of that second one. Okay, so we'll take the last keyframe there and we'll move it over by one. I'll go in the, in the center, interpolate, and set a keyframe. And then we can move the last one over again, um, interpolate in the middle, add a keyframe and then see if that's slow enough. And if it is slow enough, then you know you might want to just move it over again and slow it down one more time. And like 
like so. So then once you've got all those keyframes set, um, at this point, let's just hit uh, our playback. Let's check it out, see how it's working. So now I've got a little bit of ease on both of those arms there. Now, if I want to slow it down even more though, I'll take all these keyframes that I did and I can set them back to stop motion keyframes again and then I can put them on twos. So I'll just select those keyframes and move them over. Oops. And so on. And then let's hit play one last time and check it out. There we go. So hopefully that just gave you another insight of a different way of animating and uh, some studios prefer to do it one way and some studios prefer to do it the other way. It's really kind of, you know, up to you on what you feel like doing, but it's just another tool in your toolbox. So thanks for that and we'll see you next week.